Hey YouTube, um, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to give you an update on uh, what's happening on the 450 SL. Uh, if you watched the previous video, um, I could not start the car for some reasons. I had the spark, I had the fuel. Um, I didn't check compression yet and I'm still not at the point where I check compression but um, as I started to uh, dive into the motor I started to find things that I need to be able to uh, uh, stabilize or fix them before I can start the motor so on the previous movie the previous previous video I had uh, the spider what I call the spider which is the fuel distributor sitting uh, right there I took the full di fuel distributor out I also uh, took the uh, valve cover um, out and that's actually where the uh, valves are sitting right in there you can see the valves um, I took the injectors out that's where the injectors are sitting um, and I took uh, the sparks out on both sides both banks of the motor this is where the sparks are sitting there's only uh, four spark plugs on each uh, bank, which uh, makes it eight spark plugs. Thanks God. Um, Mercedes known for putting two spark plugs for every uh, cylinder, which on the V8s make it uh, 16 spark plugs time uh, about $5 as uh, Bosch spark plugs. A V12, it's 24 spark plugs. So adds up really fast when you do uh, motor work on these uh, motors. So I took the injectors out, um, I already cleaned them and I want to show you how they look after they're clean, uh, which is, I'll see when I'm editing because I have a picture of uh, how it looked before it was clean, but uh, when they were dirty it was nothing like that. I put them in special uh, material that I clean uh, stuff that doesn't uh, damage plastic parts or anything like that and, um, and I cleaned them. So right now you can see that they look shiny and nice, looks almost like brand new. I checked every one of them, uh, they function good. Uh, these are the seats that actually hold the um, injector inside. These are the grommets and the, you can see how dirty this is. So you can just imagine how this, the um, injectors look like, but uh, these are the pieces of plastic that the injector actually sits on top and all of that sits actually in the hole I'll show you the hole where it's sitting this is sitting on the injector just like that here and this piece sits on top of uh, the head inside the head and this one is locking it on top and the screw goes on top just like that and holds it in place make sure that the uh, injector is not popping out but all of that I'll show you all the pieces of plastics that I showed you sits right in here I hope I'm not gonna drop it in all right, but it sits like here and that's where the fuel distributor is connecting to so you get the fuel dripping into here and from here it goes straight into the motor so next step uh, next uh, step you can see I just touch it inside and it's uh, still dirty of course I need to clean all of that but next step, what I'm going to do is, um, I already ordered the new uh, uh, seatings for the um, for the injectors. As soon as I get them, I'm going to assemble one at a time and check compression on the motor. So this is my next step. Um, after I check compression and I make sure that I got all the compression, uh, of course I'm going to have to put, uh, and I ordered already, uh, new gaskets for the valve covers. But after I clean everything real nice, and um, I put um, the, the sprayers, the nozzles, the injectors back in. I'm going to check compression on each one of the cylinders and make sure that I have compression. After I know that I got compression, um, the way it works on the motor, if you watched my previous videos, I explained it a few times. The way it works on the motor, you need three things to create, uh, um, to create uh, explosion inside the combustion chamber. You need, uh, of course, the fuel. You can't do anything if you don't have fuel. You need to have the spark, uh, which comes from the spark plug, and you need to have compression. If uh, you lose compression or you can't compress the fuel and the air inside the combustion chamber, the car won't run. So uh, on this video, I'm just giving you a heads up on my work. And again, if you say it back in the future or 
back in my future, which I'm back in your past, then the car is probably running. Somebody's driving it around the uh, streets of Atlanta or the highways of uh, the United States. Um, if you watch it right now, as I do work on the car, so it's kind of uh, just to give you a heads up, show you what's happening with the car um, on real time. What am I doing to the car to make sure that uh, I put it back to work? Um, if you have any questions, concerns, uh, remarks, if uh, you know more than I do, and uh, that's you don't need to be a genius to know more than I do, um, write down, give me a comment, write down what you think. Um, if you have any advice or anything that I don't think about, I'm always glad uh, to take it. Uh, never pretend to know everything uh, the other way around. Always willing to learn and uh, listen. So that's where I'm standing right now. Um, of course, one of the other things I'm going to want to check is uh, the timing chain. Um, I already checked it and it feels like it might be a little more loose than I would like it to be. And there is a possibility that I'm going to have to replace it. I can show you right here. Look at that. That's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be tight. That's too much freedom. Now, I don't know if it's a hydraulic uh, tensioner. This is a uh, tensioner is right there. Uh, let me see if I can show you this one right here. Not this one, the one on the bottom, right there. This is what put tensions on right there. You see that rail? The rail is being pushed by uh, the tensioner. Now, it might be that the tensioner is not good, and that's why the uh, timing chain is so loose. But sometimes if you have it like that, you know, when the motor works hard, you can skip timing too. And that might be one of the things that I'm concerned about, that maybe uh, the the motor just skip timing. Um, there is a way to check the timing. You got to put the crankshaft at a certain angle. Um, and then uh, you have uh, you have the, the position of uh, um, the smart, uh, the um, valve. <coughs> losing the words but uh, you have the position of the valve shaft and uh, you have to uh, put them together at the same timing that's how you check that you have timing that the timing is right so uh, that's one of the things I'm gonna do next but even if the timing is right or wrong right now there is no point for me to check that uh, until I can actually check compression or it's probably not true to say that this way because I'm gonna check the timing anyway while I'm waiting for the parts uh, but that's it so far. This is um, just kind of like uh, heads up on what's happening where I'm standing with the motor to anybody who's following and uh, willing to listen for me, listen to me talking for so long. Um, this is the 450 SL and we're going to try and crank it and put it back to work. Thank you for watching and if you like my videos, give me the thumbs up. If you don't like them, don't waste your time. Go and look for something else. Thank you.